In this question, we have to simplify 16 over 9 raised to the power minus 3 over 2 times 16 raised to the power minus 3 over 4. All of these in bracket raised to the power 1 over 3. Now, this is a classical question that is going to test our understanding and our application of the rules of indices. And now, if you notice, we are having um, a fractional power, okay? We are also having negative power. So, two rules that will help us to be able to solve that is first, if you have a number, let's say a number a raised to power, a negative power, okay? This is the same as if we are having 1 over a raised to power m, okay? So, if you have a negative power, that means you should use that number to divide 1, like we have 1 over a raised to power m. So, in the second case, the other rule that will help us when we're having a fraction, a, a fractional power, and you are having something like a again, let's say a raised to the power m over n. In this case, this is the same as look at the power. We have n as the denominator. That means we have to find the nth root of a, okay, and then we'll still raise it to the power of m. So those are the rules that will help us to solve this question. And I just want to divide my board so that you can see how best we can solve this. And I'm going to be showing some tips that really, really help you to solve questions like this. And the very key tip I want to I want you to just speak is this. Don't try solving all these questions by writing them out and line by line. You can take them piecewise, all right? That's why we have the beauty of board mass or PEMDAS. You can take things out. And first of all, like here, we have a bracket, okay? We can try and evaluate this first expression and then evaluate this expression. Then put everything, the result, into this bracket and apply this outer power. It's better that way because we'll be less prone to error. So, in this particular case, first we have 16 over 9, okay? 16 over 9 raised to the power minus 3 over 2. Like I explained, using this law of indices, this will be 1 divided by... 16 over 9 raised to the power 3 over 2. I can take out the negative power because now I'm seeing it is 1 divided by the expression that I have. So I've taken care of the negative power. And this is nothing but the same as 1 multiplied by, you now reverse the order, 9 over 16 raised to the power 3 over 2. Okay? Now, we are, we, are, we, are, we are making some progress. Let's also take it further. If you now want to apply this particular law, and I will take it piecewise, okay? So this will mean that I have this number as, because I'm having 2 as a denominator, so it will be the square root of 9. So I have the square root of 9 over the square root of 16 raised to the power 3. Okay, so I've taken care of the denominator in the power by finding the square root of the numbers in that bracket. So I know the square root of 9, I know that to be 3, and the square root of 16 in order to be 4. So this is 3 over 4 raised to the power 3. And I can just express it out. 3 raised to the power 3 is 3 multiplying itself in 3 places. 3 times 3, 9 times 3, that's 27. Okay. Over 4 raised to the power 3 is 4 multiplying itself in 3 times 4 times 4, that is 16. 16 times 4, that is 64. Okay. So I can note this that for this first expression, in our question, I have 27 over 64, but that's not all. I also need to work on 16 raised to the power minus 3 over 4. So I can say for the second expression, 16 raised to the power minus 3 over 4. This just going directly will just be um, 1 over 16 raised to the power 3 over 4. Okay, so I've done it just like this. Then I'm going to have this as 1 over um. 16 raised to the power 3 over 4 will be the fourth root of 16 raised to the power 3. Now, the fourth root of 16 is asking me for a number that I can multiply by itself in four places to give me 16. I know it is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is going to give me 16. So, this is the same as 1 over 2 raised to the power 3, okay? 2 raised to the power 3 is 8, okay? So, this is 1 over 8, all right? So, no problem with that. I cannot say that I want to use this to try and solve the question as appropriate that I cannot bring everything into this bracket. So I have something like this. The first expression 
I got to be 27 was wow, okay. Look look at this. I'm noticing something. I'm seeing this to the power of three. I'm seeing this to the power of three. I want to raise everything to one over three. So let's just use this fraction to the power of three because the powers are common and they can fact they can cut out themselves. Three and one over three can easily cut out themselves. So I can just use that to say I have this as this is writing on seven over sixty four. Let me just put this. I have this as three over four. Which is part three, okay? Multiply by the second expression is one over two raised to power three, okay? Then all of them are raised to power one over three. Now I can I can expand this to say I can factor out this power or even just this power bring it to multiply each of the entry by opening that bracket. So I will have three over four, okay? Raised to power three, okay? But now, when this 1 over 3 is coming, I can say times 1 over 3. This is beautiful. Okay? Then multiply by 1 over 2 raised to the power 3. Okay? Then times 1 over 3 also. Okay? Yeah, I can say it's 1 raised to the power 1 over 3, but I know 1 raised to the power any number is 1, so I don't really need that. And I'm doing this because, like I said before, I can observe that this theory can cut this theory and this theory can cut this theory. And with that, my solution will be 3 over 4 multiplied by 1 over 2. Yeah, 3 times 1, that is 3. 4 times 2, that is 8. And looking at the options, you can see option C, 3 over 8, and that is the solution to this. So, the, the advice I want to just give you as students is that you don't need to start expressing these out line by line line by line you may miss one or two things by doing that just take it piecewise and you can now open it up and solve everything just like we did and practicing with this type of questions you will get to build your proficiency in solving questions like this on indices as you come across them in this question we also express 1 plus 2 log 3 to base 10 in the form log q to base 10 okay and we have all these options that they were given in log to base 10. And what we need to note, the key point for us to be able to solve this question is that 1 can be expressed as a logarithm of a particular number to the base of that number. So if you have log of 2 to base 2, that is 1. If you have log of 30 to base 30, that is also 1. But in this particular case, Look at what we are working with. We are working with log to base 10. So, for our particular question here, we can rewrite this equation to be, instead of 1, we can say that is log to base 10 of 10, because log to log of a number to the base of that number is 1, okay? Then plus 2 multiplied by log of 3 to base 10, okay? Now, you want to express it in this. That means you need to eliminate this particular two. And another law of logarithm is telling us that this two, that is the coefficient of log of 3 to base 10, we can take to the power of that logarithm so that we have it as log of 10 to base 10 plus log of 3 to base 10 raised to power 2. Okay? So this would be log to base 10 of 10 plus log to base 10, 3 raised to power 2 is 9. And then, the other rule of logarithm that will help us is that when we have two logarithms that are being added together with the same base, we can just take a particular base and multiply those numbers whose logarithm we are finding by saying 10 times 9. And this will be log to base 10 of 90. So, this is now exactly in the order that we have to find log to base 10 of q and here you can see log to base 10 of 90 and looking at the options that we have this is option a log to base 10 of 90 all right so that's all we are going to be having in our lecture today we hope that this will be of benefit of use to somebody out there don't forget to subscribe to our channel we have a lot of resources that you can use to enhance your academic excellence. And that's our desire, that you go out and be the best. And as you do all this, we know 
that all will work out together for good. Until next time, God bless you.